there are a few key lessons, one of which is understand cash flow, um, one of which is act with confidence. No one really knows what they're doing, even as an adult. Everyone is just acting, you know, if you do the next best thing, that's as good as it gets, but it's good to be confident about that. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Empire Life podcast. I'm your host, Allison Ramsey, and I'm also the founder of Empire Life, where we guide female founders in scaling their online empires. And today I'm with special guest, Chelsea Roney. She's the CEO of Proxy, which is a company that allows individuals and businesses to create customized maps. And I'll hand it over to her to intro herself a little bit more. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on, Allison. I am, you know, we started Proxy about two years ago, uh, and we've been working hard to grow our custom mapping platform ever since. Uh, before that, I owned a couple of businesses and exited with both of those, uh, which was a fantastic experience um, in terms of building up my knowledge base um, for Proxy. Amazing. Well, I just want to dive right in to getting to know you more and what Proxy is all about. Chelsea, what what do you feel like are the challenges that you've overcome in now having several businesses? And also, if you feel comfortable to go into being a female business owner or COO and how this has benefited you and helped you to be stronger at the end of it. Yeah, a couple of different challenges that I can talk about. Uh, especially when it comes to business. Um, my second business was a services business, and specifically it was a landscape installation business. And I purchased that after the sale of my first. Uh, no, I didn't have any experience in landscaping, which, you know, <laughs> we could talk about a different day, and that was a challenge. But one of the biggest challenges there were two challenges in that business, really. One was managing cash flow. And I think any of your listeners who have to do that for their businesses to make payroll and purchase um, materials will understand that managing cash flow can uh, really be tricky, especially when you have different, you know, many different accounts receivable and, uh, you know, payables with a more strict deadline. So that was... Uh, a big challenge that I needed to learn how to navigate. And then the second one was being the only female in an all-male company. All of the man the other couple of managers and employees were uh, all male. And so, and I didn't speak the native language of many of those employees. And so all of those things were really difficult. And I think you know, how I navigated those was um, trying to build trust um, in my company. So trying to build trust amongst my employees um, by giving them transparent insight into what's going on in the company and transparent insight into why I was asking them to do the things I asked them to do. I think that, you know, transparency builds trust and trust builds leadership. So that's, um, how I navigated that situation. Those are all great points. And the clear communication, being transparent with them, kind of getting people on the same page and in unity or moving as one towards a common goal. That's right. Those are great points. And I wanted to move on to, to a little bit of a lighter question. If you feel <laughs> like, if you feel like... <laughs> sure. Entrepreneurs need a morning routine, or if you if you have one, you, you want to share that. Yeah, well, right now I have two young kids. I've got a four year old and a two year old, and the morning routine isn't as structured as it used to be, nor as structured as I would like. Um, but I, I, for me, per I, I can't prescribe it to someone else, but for me personally, some structure in the morning is really good. So. I always wake up, um, you know, even if I work from home, I always get dressed. Uh, I make sure to eat breakfast and I've recently found, been diving into health more and working toward a breakfast 
mostly a protein and that has been a really great part of my morning routine that has benefited me throughout the rest of my day. I try to hit at least 30 to 40 grams of protein just in breakfast without a protein shake. So that requires a little more coordination. So I think, you know, diving into the morning routine part, it actually starts the night before for me is just preparing uh, what I'd like to get dressed in and the meal that I'll eat the next morning, kind of getting that laid out, uh, getting the house tidied up. And then in the morning when I wake up, it's all about executing and eating, getting the kids fed, um, getting the dishes out, and then uh, making sure that I'm I'm ready for my day. I always book about 30 minutes of buffer time in between the start of my workday and the first meeting. And I use that time to clean up any emails that came in overnight uh, and just make sure I look at my calendar and understand what's going on for the day. Now, before kids, I had been doing a more sophisticated morning routine, like getting up, working out, uh, getting up much earlier, I should say, working out, you know, uh, planning, writing my day out. Um, it was much more involved, but you got to roll with the punches. So that's <laughs> what little kids teach you, I think. That's true. I, I have one kid. She's a teenager at this oh. point. So I, <laughs> uh-huh. I can uh, stretch. It's still, by the time I get back from dropping her off at school, I yeah. am probably about to start working. So then I'm, I'm like, okay, if I stretch or I work out sometime in between yeah. and fit it into my schedule, I'm feeling really good about myself. Yeah. Is that your main morning routine? It's like your main, mm-hmm. um, like the key part that makes you feel good throughout the day? Is that the yeah. Yeah. Yes, and, and working out too. I hurt my ankle a few months ago. I broke my leg. <laughs> so I'm still kind of recovering and I can stretch yeah. playing volleyball with my daughter outside yeah. on some un- uneven ground. <laughs> oh my gosh, that <laughs> sounds awful. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm mostly recovered at this point and the stretching has been helping me to recover mm-hmm. faster and feel more like myself. And then so, I can start hitting the weights again or uh, like a <laughs> harder workout, uh, yeah. more intense. So the fitting that in at some point does really benefit me and help me to feel strong and productive in my day for sure. Yeah. And something I've been incorporating in my morning routine, I got into gua sha. I'm not sure I ever say it correctly. Oh, the facial massage. Yeah. Yeah. I got myself one and my daughter and we've been watching some YouTubes about it and doing a little Uh bit. So that makes me feel that I'm, even if I don't do the full routine of what they talk about on YouTube, if I do even one fourth of what they're saying, I feel like, okay, I put on moisturizer wash my face, put on moisturizer. <laughs> I am really kicking butt. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I can totally relate. Well, that's great. I'll have to look into that and I'll look forward to the day when I can perform that massage on my face without, <laughs> right, <laughs> without feeling... pulling me to the ground. <laughs> Guilty or, or yeah. Or... My daughter also gave me a jade roller and I do that oh. every now and then too. Cool. What a great gift. So... Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I put it in the refrigerator. It's another uh, gift at some point that I got for myself of having a little fridge in the bathroom. Really? If you put like creams in there or the jade roller, it's just really refreshing because it's really cool when you take it out. Sounds like a hack I need to (laughs) go check out. (laughs) Those, Those all enhance the morning routine. And I want to dive into the next one, Chelsea, about what do you do when you feel any resistance coming up? Honestly, I work out. (laughs) Um, For me, it really helps to be physical and that really calms my mind. And so I will either do a strength workout or take a jog. Uh, Jogging outside is my favorite, but I do live in Seattle, so... It tends to rain a little bit more than I'd like for an outdoor jog. So if I feel any resistance, whether that be in the workplace or at home, in a conversation, I usually just try to get up, move my body, and that usually takes it down to a level where I can come up with an action plan to Mm -hmm. help move through that resistance. 
I'm curious, does that ever happen to you as well? Yeah, well, the it, there was a lot of letting go for me with my recent injury because mm. that is my go-to. I just sure. take all my anger and frustration out on lifting weights or like uh, heavy working out, strenuous strength training. And yeah. that's been a go-to for me my whole life of, of being an athlete and so I needed to kind of let that go and think, what can I do? Yeah. And I started doing more body weight exercises and push-ups or different things with another, my arms or my other leg. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I completely understand what you're saying. And it does, it does happen sometimes where I need to tell myself, okay, I need to walk away from this. So I stand mm. up walk away from the computer mm -hmm. I might uh, do a steam I take a hot shower or eat the bath the, or a heavy workout and then like you said the, the answer always comes in that process it starts to it always comes I don't know about you but I try really hard if I feel resistance not to respond in the moment I mm -hmm. find that can get me into trouble so I've stopped doing it <laughs> yes and for the listeners something I think is really great to say if you have to give an answer I've learned to say thank you I've received this I'm noodling on it or I'm thinking it through and I'll get back to you by end of day tomorrow or end of day today and give some kind of time frame and I think that gives me the freedom too, like you're saying, to think it through instead of just respond. And I really am thinking about all the different outcomes and what I want the outcome to be. What's the win-win for everybody and the best outcome for everybody involved? What do you say when you need a little bit more time? Some, something like that. I was just thinking through a situation that happened the other day. I said to this person, I'm having a strong reaction to what you're saying. I need a few minutes to be more, I forget how I word it, but be essentially be more reasonable about what I'm thinking. And I think that helps in a lot of, in a, in a couple of ways. One is that that person can probably feel that friction or they know it will come up anyway. And when they're bringing up something hard. And so I think by saying, hey, I'm having a strong reaction, it just diffuses it. Like, yeah, yeah maybe that was going to happen. And then by saying, I need just a few minutes to process and come back with a, let me think this through, maybe it's on me. Um, it really diffuses it. So that's the other key to that statement in my head is bringing it back on myself and not, not mm. because really I control my emotions. So mm -hmm. it is on me. It is on me. Like, but that also helps in a conversation to frame it as this isn't you, I'm having a strong reaction. This is my, my choice. You know, like I'm going to work through this and I'll get back to you when I can have a really reasonable thought put together. <laughs> I love that when we might feel triggered or some previous experience is coming up that maybe we didn't realize we hadn't processed. Mm -hmm. That's true. And it's taking accountability for how you're feeling instead of projecting it or making it the other person's responsibility to handle right. how you're feeling. I've said that before too, in, in more interpersonal relationships of, I am sensing that this is coming up because of a previous experience. This is not really related to you yet. It's still, it's still upsetting for me. Mm -hmm. And it's something I need to process. We can completely relate. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to dive into, well, I, I wanted to also talk about the childhood story and just jump to that, um, that question to dive in because a lot of times what we're doing right now in our lives, when we look back on different personality traits that we may have had when we were kids or activities we were doing, it is interestingly really similar to sometimes what we're doing in our adult life. And I would love to hear a story reflecting why you do what you do right now. Yeah. So I've always been an entrepreneur. Um, 
I think I was around the age of four or five when I first learned that you need money in your life. <laughs> I think I was watching my mom balance her checkbook. As you'll remember, that used to be an event that happened um, just to make sure you would be cash flow positive at the end of the month, I think. Um, and I was watching her and of course we had those discussions around, well, what are you doing? Why are you budgeting? Why are you writing down these numbers? And I remember having this really strong, you're probably going to laugh. Everyone's probably going to laugh. Like, I just remember thinking, I need to start making money now so I can like, <laughs> that's really sweet. Like this little girl just being like, okay, well, I guess I need to start saving. Like, and I really believe I was, I just remember how convicted I felt about that. And so I decided, so I was like, well, I don't know how this conversation went, but I assume I asked my mom how I could make money. I assume she told me I could do chores or sell things or, you know, I'm just, I'm assuming she talked to me about going to work. And so, of course, I went straight. My first, like, little job was um, pet sitting in my neighborhood. So I would, on our whole street, it was a pretty long street filled with great neighbors and I was like the the go-to kid for like just feeding the cat and scooping the box while people were gone or grabbing their mail and putting it inside. And I loved that job. I would make sure everyone knew I was available to do it. And I would, um, you know, just save that money at the end of the day. And then I've had a job pretty much ever since then. Um, I taught private swim lessons after that in my backyard, um, even when I was about 10. And, um, and then I sold flowers for a while. I sold class notes in college. I had a little, you know, boutique thing. And then I started a SaaS business my senior year in college. So I think you'll understand and some other listeners will understand the curse of being an entrepreneur is that a business idea is always sneaking up on you. So yeah, I think there's always some happen. in the back. For sure. Yeah. There's always some in the back burner. And you're like, okay, okay one well, in, in two years, I'm going to do this. I'm going to also know, I'll open this one. And then in three years, yeah. I'm going to open this one too. <laughs> yes. Somebody asks you like, why are you have your old business? You're like, yeah, this, I'm just getting started. Yeah. I have all these other things yeah. that I'm going to do too. So I'm constant. so glad you can identify it. It's true. I think people, you know, and I don't know about you, but not a lot of folks can understand that. And so it's not something I end up telling a lot of people. Um, I'm sure you can identify with that, but. Yes, it unless they really, well, even if they really want to know, you, you might find yourself holding, withholding or holding back. Sure. Yeah. I understand what you mean of. Uh, I do this business and they're like, oh my God, that's so, but this and that, that's so incredible. And you're like, there's, my point is there's a lot of internal pressure for me that I I need to keep striving and thriving and, and pushing forward and right. uh, releasing a new business in the future or I, and it's, it's not for the the fame or wanting people validation oh no it's, a, it's completely an inner fire and uh, that's never ceasing <laughs> yeah I don't know about for you but for me it's all about bringing something to life that's in my yeah. head yeah it's almost well I don't want to get too haughty here but like it's almost like an artist like I'm sure they have a vision in their head and they just <laughs> can't stop until they get it out and sometimes I feel that way just about business <laughs> Yes, uh, I was talking to my daughter. We, well, she's always seen me being an entrepreneur and having several jobs a lot of times in my life. And I was telling her, it's as if you're creating something from nothing, and there's no feeling that mm -hmm. she, there's no there's no words even that can describe the feeling. Yeah, bringing something to fruition that wasn't there before. I'm right She's there like, with yeah, you. Yeah, mom. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Does she have any inclination toward entrepreneurship? She's done the pet sitting, like you were talking about. 
and yeah. she that other or she also had a slime business at some point yeah. so fun <laughs> my kids are very very the slime <laughs> they, i still have about i think it's 10 gallons of blue <laughs> in her yeah. closet like in case so she gets into it again but i think at yeah. some point she sort of outgrew it and she's yeah gonna be 16 so probably so <laughs> that is a lot of fun but yeah they yeah. i helped her and her friends start that business so well, you yeah, started in elementary school where they had different options for glitter and colors and oh it's a lot of fun for them yeah i believe it <laughs> That's really fun. I want to go into the next one. If you were starting a business today, Chelsea, what do you wish you had known before or that you've learned along the way now and that you would incorporate in your new business? It's hard because this answer is hard for me. I think a lot in part because a lot of my businesses, I'm able to keep going because I'm naive about how hard it will be. And I I try not to research a whole lot before I start something because I think it can really deter you um, if you just know the future challenges. So I don't know how much I would wish to know starting over, but there are a few key lessons, one of which is understand cash flow, um, one of which is act with confidence. No one really knows what they're doing. Even as an adult, everyone is just acting, you know, if you do the next best thing, that's as good as it gets, but it's good to be confident about that, especially outwardly. And I think the third thing I would say is it's all about your network. Um, a lot of times it's about who you know in your community, whether that be other business professionals, like people that control funding or whether that be, you know, key leaders in your community who might be patrons of a business one day, or, you know, even just friends. I think the more that you can give back and build your network and be a really good friend or colleague, then those rewards will come back in multitudes. Those are great. Those are important lessons because... I, I recently, I've been wanting to join a country club and I recently joined one. It still feels strange to say it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being so fancy as I, I grew up in, uh, in more poverty environment and I, it has been in my adult life. I've had empire life events where I'm bringing people get, together to network. But in my personal life, I do still want to be making connections with people where we have some resonance to or similar aspirations in life. And that I've been, I've just joined uh, like a few different women's parts of like, there's a women's association. So I'm getting more involved with that. And I think we're always building our network. And as I get older, I especially understand that too. Uh -huh. uh, it's about, especially for women, I think sometimes we, yeah. we are less, I think, I hope with the new generation, with Gen Z, uh, that they are going to encourage more women coming together and supporting each other. That's part of what Empire Life is about, is women rising together and being there for each other and networking or having resources of what other female founders are doing. And I think that's extremely important for, for businesses, especially as women to help each other. What were you going to say? I totally agree with you on that. I think it's difficult as women to find like-minded women um, in terms of, and it's even hard to verbalize, like, it's not quite ambition, it's not quite a uh, professional skill level, but, you know, it's it's hard to build that network and find like-minded folks. So it's exciting that you've perhaps found an organization that can lead you into that. I'm working on it myself. And I don't know, this is something that my parents didn't go into for me very much, is network. Um, 
and hopefully it's something like you mentioned, like, I'd love to pass this down to my children. Like, Hey, you know, it is important how you you network with your community and those around you. It is. And while still balancing great boundaries and taking care of your home, I I think, and those, my, my parents, maybe they were really helpful sometimes to, to neighbors that weren't thought a lot of times, you know, like you guys are fine or the, the kids are going to be fine. So I think, I think there's a managing our homes first and thinking, like you said, even within our homes about cash flow and organization and making sure, like you said, that there's a great breakfast in the morning to eat for everybody and or food prepping, like really thinking about that first. And then from there, thinking, how can I help my community? Because if we're showing up kind of disheveled or disorganized or anxious and frantic to help someone else, that's an indication that maybe we're not filling our cup first and then being able to pour into the community from there. And I think people really notice that, how we're showing up, even if we're showing up to be of support for them. Yeah. I, that resonates really deeply, uh, with me. Um, I, I totally agree. Uh, I don't, you know, something that's helped me to this extent is going to therapy and not many people talk about that either, but that helps on both a professional and a personal level. And, you know, bringing that consistency in terms of emotional output and setting the tone for my family, uh, and coworkers and things, um, that's been really helpful. It's a trick, I suppose. Me too. I I totally agree. I I do that. I'm doing it twice, twice a week cool. these days, and, and awesome. it feels <laughs> like self care, right? It's, it's like a giving back to ourselves and mm-hmm. being able to talk through things because I have. I think that even the bigger something for me that I've realized, and and for a lot of clients, and probably you've you feel this way too, the more bigger your inner fire and aspirations are, Mm -hmm. it, it requires a level of uncovering the layers of maybe traumas or things that are going to come up in business Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. will stifle us. And as we undo the layers or process Mm -hmm. those things, we are freer to move forward and go for those aspirations without when the feelings come up such as am i supposed to be here am i worthy of this Mm -hmm. is am i charging too much or different kind of those which carry a lot of emotions in those questions then we have the tools to say no i i deserve this or i've worked really hard and a lot of positive affirmations and how we're talking to ourselves to be able to propel being forward. Yeah, that's the internal narrative in dialogue mm-hmm. is incredibly important. I think unlocking that brings you to the next level. And it sounds like you've found that too. It, it, thinking with that abundance, it sounds cliche, but thinking with that abundance mindset and acting as if you've already gotten to your personal next level has just done everything for me um it sounds like for you too it's all about that positive self-talk it is and i think for me i since i strive hard or have have a lot of internal pressure sometimes i have come to understand through a lot of experiences that there's really no competition besides doing better tomorrow yeah. than we did today within yeah ourselves with with and and similar i was just talking to my fiance about this yesterday night and we were talking about how even in a romantic relationship it's more about being a team and moving together rather than well you did this and i'm gonna do this too or Mm. having some kind of competition with one another because he's solely trying to be better himself 
And I'm slowly trying to be better myself. And then when two people come together like that, it's, there's, it's amazing. There's, yeah, that's you know magical. what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's, that's super magical. Yeah, exactly. That, that teamwork there and knowing that you're moving together. Yeah, that's really hard to find. Yeah, I'm super grateful. Because when somebody is really ambitious, I think, and, and same, similar in a team environment, everybody has their expertise in what they're good at and that's what they're focused on being better at that expertise mm-hmm. not overly concerned with what somebody else is doing or if they're good at it or they're not good at it it fosters a lot of growth and personal development rather competition with ourselves i think can be really healthy uh, when it's mirrored to the outside world there's always somebody that's better yes. than us at what we're doing at, or they've had more experience they have different life ex- like situations and mm. it's good to be happy when i see someone that i feel like is doing really good i make an effort to i just bless them in a way or like be really yep. grateful and and also to tell myself if it's possible for them it's possible for me Yep. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Removing that edge of competition. And so I I don't know what changed in me, but it was somewhere along the way where I was able to stop feeling not jealous, but like, oh, they've got something I want or something to truly being happy for someone. Mm -hmm. And now I'm so, I really am. I, I am so happy when someone does something great in it you know, even if it's a competitor, like, wow, great. They figured that out. Congratulations. Um, but that took a long time, but, um, that's a huge, you know, advan. I think it will even grow into a bigger advantage for myself and you and whoever, but, um, you know, if you can really be happy for someone, it just unlocks so much for yourself too. It's hard to explain. It, it does. It's because, it helps us to be happy for ourselves. Oh, and and vice yes, versa. Yes, I love that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It helps you to be happy for yourself. And the funny thing is, is that the happier and you are for yourself and in in your life and in your being, the more goodness comes. It's like that whole lucky girl syndrome that's going along around online. Have you seen this? I haven't. I'll look into that. Well, it's it's kind of like this internet, you know. TikTok trend, but it's like basically you're supposed to say to yourself, I'm the luckiest. Like anything yeah. happens that is in your favor or good. And, you know, pretty soon it's just like manifesting or positive self talk. Like pretty soon everything feels positive and your whole life feels like it's going your way. So I think that's kind of what we're talking about is this lucky. It is. Thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the lucky girl syndrome. It, exactly. And I find myself, if I get a little bit stressed out lately, I'm getting stressed out about something that's still just so good to even have that problem. <laughs> like, that's, oh, that's what I yeah. tell myself. Like, I, I'm so lucky that this is the least of my problems. Yeah. It's still how I feel in the moment. Right. I want to move on to the next one. Um what are some strategies that you feel like some people have overlooked in your industry or in business? Overlooked strategies. <clears throat> it could be health, maybe in their eating, their sleep. Okay. Um, probably my biggest life business hack is to define the top two priorities for the day. So... And those priorities have to be the things that will move my business or my life forward, not something like email, like a checklist item. Like it needs to be a bigger project or something that will bring me more customers or decrease expenses or, um, you know, like really meaty. And it, it doesn't have to be big, but it does have to make impact. And in, you know, some days in my business, I might have, If it's really big, it might just be one priority, but it might be two and it might be three, but never more than three. 
And then in my personal life, I might have one thing. <laughs> like it's just too crazy to do more than that. And then once that those things are done, I let ev- sometimes this is hard, but I let everything else go emotionally. Like obviously there's mm-hmm. some to-do list on top of that. There's always things that can be done. But if those key priorities are taken care of, I can feel good about where I ha- – anything else that happened during the day is like – whatever even if it's you know and that can apply to bad things too so maybe Mm -hmm. something bad happens but at least I got that one thing done and so usually that's the thing I do very first when I don't have a meeting you know the first gap I have in my schedule is what I'll I'll just go after that one thing you know I'll look at my emails right when I wake up to make sure there's nothing urgent or right when I start work and then if there's nothing urgent I don't bother with answering anything else I don't bother with any other communication I just do that one thing and then I can do whatever you know, go on to the second or, you know, go back to that. Not busy work, but like checklist type work. That's, it's so true. I feel so productive when I do that because we can tend to be, that relieves being hard on ourselves at the end of the day. It's like, okay, I'm grateful that I got these things done. I got everything done that I needed to get done. Yep. And then, like you said, everything else we get to let go of. The trick for me and probably and I'm sure for you too you can add some color to this is like what I do in my month is that I have like six or seven main priorities for the business like I need to accomplish you know reaching out to 10 new major you know customers or I need to set up affiliate marketing or something like this and then I can break that down into a couple of tasks like maybe two or three tasks and then I plop those into my days and if I can get through all those six or seven priorities in a month then that's that's as good as it gets yeah and you can feel really great about that Mm -hmm. that's amazing advice Mm -hmm. and Chelsea before we hop off I was wanting to know the top three concepts maybe it's a an iteration or reiteration of some of the ones that you've already said about the strategies some of the strategies that Mm -hmm. you want to leave the audience with I think it's probably positive self-talk uh, is key. Prioritization is key. And one thing we didn't talk about in terms of marketing or business, I think video is key too. Mm, yes. I know we didn't talk about that, but that's something that's big on my mind lately. I'm not good at it. It's very frustrating for me to produce a, you know, a video, mm. you know, some content that's video, but Uh, alas we must and yeah i'm thinking about lately i think you're probably better at it than you realize oh god i don't natural about that and then people the more natural you are people will really connect i think it's something that i've been realizing because sometimes i think uh what if i I watch okay let's say i watch myself and i hear my voice or i see certain ticks or like things that i get that I always do but the more that I talk to people about that like that's what brings people back that's what connects people to you and I've started to notice that for myself too certain youtubers I like it's not there's no such thing as perfection Uh -uh. and it's more about showing up and people will who, who are supposed to connect with you they will resonate with what you're talking about and it's better that you're there than not there. Yes. That's very difficult to remember, but I like that, how you phrase that. And there is support too for, like, we just hired a video editor. Cool. Because so it's, <laughs> it's like a questioning, right? Do I love this part? Am I really good at it? I, I say I'm really good at creating the content and yeah. attracting the people that need to be there to or having solo episodes Mm -hmm. and producing it but then the editing Mm -hmm. uh, knowing what's supposed to be there for tiktok or the shorts Mm -hmm. we have a whole package now when we do a podcast with our incredible video editor and she gives me a certain amount of shorts the edited podcast uh, highlights reel and 
now it's I don't necessarily need to worry so much about all of those things. And then we have another person on the team who takes that content with and creates the text based on previous text for the content and plans out the scheduling. Oh, that's an amazing hack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. To really dive in, well, brings it back to the positive self-talk and really being real with ourselves too. Is this something we enjoy doing or that we have time for Mm -hmm. and that we need to make or that we need to make time for? Is this a priority Mm -hmm. for our community? And I think video really is a priority, like you're saying. Yeah, I think it is. It's all about connection and video helps with that. And I want to let everybody else know too that's listening that we're going to put all of Chelsea's information about how to contact her and more about proxy in the show notes. And thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate the time.